In this training module, you will be learning to drive this BR403 ICE3, also known as the Intercity Express 3. You will be driving the train a short distance and performing passenger operations. When you're ready to begin, climb aboard. Take a seat in the driver's seat. Firstly, you will need to set the reverser. This controls the direction of travel and activates the cab. Störung. Störung. Schließvorgang eingeleitet. Zug beeinflussung. Set the headlights to let others around you know this train is operational. Open the passenger doors to allow boarding. Use the door control switch and set the doors to open. Close the doors before departure. The train is now ready to depart. Release the brakes and apply some power to get moving. You'll be doing one circuit of the training center and aim to come to a stop back at this station again afterwards. Coasting is a method used to efficiently maintain speed and reduce motor stress and maintenance requirements. Keeping to speed limits is important. If you begin over speeding, apply a small amount of braking force using the train brake. This high speed electrical multiple unit is manufactured by Siemens and is operated in Germany by Deutsche Bahn. These are the third generation of Intercity Express trains and have been in operation in Germany since the year 2000. The ICE3 runs at speeds of up to 300 km per hour in Germany. Although they've reached speeds of 368 km per hour in testing, rather than having a power car like the ICE1 and 2, the ICE3 has underfloor motors throughout this means passengers can be seated in the entire length of the train. Begin to slow down as you approach the upcoming station.
Nice work. Open the doors again to start boarding. Good work. That concludes all the basics of operating this train. In this training module, you will be taken through the operation of a BR185.2 electric locomotive. During this brief introduction, you will cover the critical driving controls and freight operations. When you are ready, climb aboard to get started. Take a seat in the driver's position. This is where you'll be spending most of your time. For this introduction, you will be driving the locomotive a short distance and coupling to a short freight train. Firstly, you will need to set the reverser. This controls the direction of travel and activates the cab. Set the headlights to let others around you know this train is operational. There are three types of brakes that are used on this locomotive. The direct brake, train brake and electric brake. The direct brake applies air brakes on just the locomotive and not the wagons. This is used usually within yards for shunting operations. Until you get more familiar with the locomotive, you can ignore this control. The train brake applies air brakes on the locomotive and the wagons together. Under most circumstances, you will slow the train using this control. The electric brake uses the traction motors to slow the train down without using the air brakes. You can use this to provide additional braking, such as when you need to manage your speed going down a steep gradient. The locomotive is now ready to go. Release the train brake and use the throttle to apply some power to get moving. Coasting is a method used to efficiently maintain speed and reduce motor stress and maintenance requirements. Keeping to speed limits is important. If you begin over speeding, apply a small amount of braking force using the train brake. This train is part of the Bombardier tracks family a modular platform of diesel and electric locomotives that come in both passenger and freight variations. More than 1800 locomotives of this family have been sold throughout Europe and are now in use in 17 different countries. The BR185.2, part of the Trex 2 family, is known for the noticeable scale it plays when accelerating from 0 to 16 km per hour. This locomotive can produce 5,600 kilowatts, that's 7,500 horsepower, and has a maximum operational speed of 140 kilometers per hour.
Türfreigabe. 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 The freight wagons are behind you. Change direction with the reverser, then change the junction indicated, either by walking over to it or using the map. The junction is correctly aligned and you can now couple up to the freight. Come to a stop once your locomotive gently touches the wagons. As you reverse, you may find it helpful to use the external camera view to help see behind you. You can couple and uncouple from either an external camera or on foot. Let's connect the formation using the external camera. Now couple the locomotive. Nice work! Change direction with the reverser and move the train forward into the indicated siding. It may take a couple of minutes for the brakes on the entire train to release.
You can couple and uncouple from either an external camera or on foot. Uncouple from the wagons on foot this time. That's it for this training module. In this training module, you will be taken through the operation of this BR-401 ICE-1 high-speed train. During this brief introduction, you will be covering the critical driving controls and passenger operations. When you are ready, climb aboard to get started. Take a seat in the driver's seat. Firstly, you will need to set the reverser. This controls the direction of travel and activates the cab. Set the headlights to let others around you know this train is operational. Activate the brakes with the brake key. Open the passenger doors to allow boarding. Close the doors before departure. The train is now ready to depart. Release the brakes and apply some power to get moving. You'll be doing one circuit of the training center and aim to come to a stop back at this station again afterwards. is a method used to efficiently maintain speed and reduce motor stress and maintenance requirements. Keeping to speed limits is important. If you begin over speeding, apply a small amount of braking force using the train brake. Built between 1989 and 1993, the ICE-1 was Germany's first high-speed intercity express train. Although it looks and is operated like an electrical multiple unit, ICE-1 train sets consist of two class 401 power cars and up to 14 intermediate cars. The ICE-1 has a maximum operational speed of 280 km per hour.
you are approaching the station. Begin applying a small amount of braking force to bring the train to a gentle stop. Nice job, the train has safely come to a stop. You can now use the door control to open the passenger doors. That concludes all the basics of operating this train. In this training module, you'll be learning how to drive this ES44C4 locomotive in BNSF railway livery. The ES44C4 is the fourth generation of the GE Evolution series. It started production in 2009 and continued to be built until 2015. Rated at 4,400 horsepower, these beasts are primarily used for heavy freight and intermodal traffic. When you're ready to begin, Climb aboard. Uh, sit in the engineer's seat. Now you'll go through the steps needed to take over this locomotive. Firstly, you will need to set the generator field switch. This needs to be enabled for the throttle to control the power of the train. This locomotive requires the reverser handle to be inserted before operation. Uh, the reverser determines the direction of travel. Switch the front headlights on. Regardless of the time of day or weather, all locomotives must have their headlights on. When getting moving, it's worth remembering the following sequence. Independent on, auto off. Throttle on, independent off. Let's go through that slowly and understand why. First, fully apply the independent brake. Now, this will ensure that regardless of anything else, your train won't move. Next, fully release the automatic brake. This will release the brakes on the rest of the train, but you won't go anywhere because those independent brakes are holding you. Now, apply a small amount of throttle, and verify that power is generated. Finally, release the independent brake, and you'll start moving.
This is a great practice to get used to, because it'll help you with two key areas. The first is that you verify that the train will take power before you release the brakes. You don't want to find yourself without power and having to hurriedly put the brakes back on. Uh, the second is that having power applied as you release the independent brakes ensures that you won't roll backwards. On steeper hill starts, you may even need to start with more power. And this is something you can practice and get used to as you find yourself out on the railroad. If you have any locomotives on the rear of the train behind freight cars, you can press the banking comms button to enable radio communications with those remote units. This will ensure that they operate their throttle and brakes in unison with your own locomotive, giving you much needed extra control on your journey. Now press it now, just to get practice, even though there aren't any connected. Coasting is a method used to efficiently maintain speed and reduce motor stress and maintenance requirements. Come to a stop in the indicated position using the independent brake. Independent brakes apply only to the locomotives in the formation and are much faster to apply and release than the automatic brake, which operates on the entire train. Change direction with a reverser, then change the junction indicated, either by walking over to it or using the map. Before proceeding, check the two couplers are in the right position to allow for automatic coupling. Look at the rear coupler on your train and ensure it's open. Operate the cut bar if it is closed to release it.
Next, walk over to the freight cars you're going to couple to and check their coupler knuckle is open too. Operate the cut bar here to open the knuckle. Before coupling cars, always check the knuckles are open, or you'll just bounce right off. Okay, the junction is correctly aligned and the cars are ready to couple. A couple up to the cars by gently driving into them at a slow speed. And most freight uses automatic knuckle couplers, so they will automatically couple once they connect. If your speed is too high, you risk derailing when coupling. Apply some brakes to slow your approach. Hey, nice work. Now change direction with the reverser and move the train forward into the indicated siding. Remember to apply a little power before releasing brakes. While it's not strictly necessary in the training center, this is the time to start forming great habits. Since you have freight cars coupled, you should slow down using the automatic brake and get the extra braking effort from those freight cars. The automatic brake applies brakes throughout the entire train. Uncouple the cars either by using the external camera or by walking to the cars on foot. That's it for this training module. Welcome to driver training at the training center. Today you'll be learning how to drive this EMD SD40-2 locomotive 
in BNSF railway livery. The SD40-2 started production in 1972, with the last unit being built in 1986. Rated at 3,000 horsepower and weighing at least 170 tons, the SD40-2 is rated with a continuous tractive effort of 831,000 pounds. Over 4,000 SD40-2 locomotives were produced by EMD in various configurations, and many are still in use today, 50 years after they were first introduced. When you're ready to begin, climb aboard. Uh, sit in the engineer's seat. Now you'll go through the steps needed to take over this locomotive. Firstly, you will need to set the generator field switch. This needs to be enabled for the throttle to control the power of the train. This locomotive requires the reverser handle to be inserted before operation. Uh, the reverser determines the direction of travel. Now switch the front headlights on. Regardless of the time of day or weather, all locomotives must have their headlights on. When getting moving, it's worth remembering the following sequence. Independent on, auto off, throttle on, independent off. Let's go through that slowly and understand why. First, fully apply the independent brake. Now, this will ensure that regardless of anything else, your train won't move. Next, fully release the automatic brake. This will release the brakes on the rest of the train, but you won't go anywhere because those independent brakes are holding you. Now, apply a small amount of throttle and verify that power is generated. Finally, release the independent brake and you'll start moving. This is a great practice to get used to because it'll help you with two key areas. The first is that you verify that the train will take power before you release the brakes. You don't want to find yourself without power and having to hurriedly put the brakes back on. Uh, the second is that having power applied as you release the independent brakes ensures that you won't roll backwards. On steeper hill starts, you may even need to start with more power. And this is something you can practice and get used to as you find yourself out on the railroad. If you have any locomotives on the rear of the train behind freight cars, you can press the banking comms button to enable radio communications with those remote units. This will ensure that they operate their throttle and brakes in unison with your own locomotive, giving you much needed extra control on your journey. Now press it now just to get practice, even though there aren't any connected. Coasting is a method used to efficiently maintain speed and reduce motor stress and maintenance requirements. Come to a stop in the indicated position using the independent brake. Independent brakes apply only to the locomotives in the formation and are much faster to apply and release than the automatic brake, which operates on the entire train.
Change direction with a reverser. Then change the junction indicated, either by walking over to it or using the map. Before proceeding, check the two couplers are in the right position to allow for automatic coupling. Look at the rear coupler on your train and ensure it's open. Operate the cut bar if it is closed to release it. Next, walk over to the freight cars you're going to couple to and check their coupler knuckle is open too. Operate the cut bar here to open the knuckle. Before coupling cars, always check the knuckles are open, or you'll just bounce right off. Okay, the junction is correctly aligned and the cars are ready to couple. I couple up to the cars by gently driving into them at a slow speed. And most freight uses automatic knuckle couplers, so they will automatically couple once they connect. speed is too high, you risk derailing the coupling. Apply some brakes to slow your approach. Hey, nice work. Now change direction with a reverser and move the train forward into the indicated siding. Remember to apply a little power before releasing brakes. While it's not strictly necessary in the training center, this is the time to start forming great habits. Since you have freight cars coupled, you should slow down using the automatic brake and get the extra braking effort from those freight cars. The automatic brake applies brakes throughout the entire train. Uncouple the cars either by using the external camera or by walking to the cars on foot. That's it for this training module.
In this training module, you will be taken through the operation of this Class 375. During this brief introduction, we will be covering the critical driving controls and passenger operations. Look, when you're ready, climb aboard to get started. Take a seat in the driver's seat. This is where you'll be spending. Firstly, you will need to insert the master key to activate the desk. The reverser controls the direction of travel. Set the headlights to let others around you know that this train is operational. For this introduction, you will be driving the train a short distance and performing passenger operations. Open the passenger doors to allow boarding. Now close the doors before departure. Now drive a loop of the circuit to get used to the controls. The train features a combined brake and throttle power handle, so pull the lever towards you to release the brakes and get moving. Coasting is a method used to efficiently maintain speed and reduce motor stress and maintenance requirements. The British Rail Class 375 is an electric multiple unit and is part of Bombardier's Electrostar family. 140 Class 375s were produced by Bombardier Transportation between 1999 and 2005. The Class 375 has a top speed of 100 miles per hour. You are approaching the station. Begin applying a small amount of braking force to bring the train to a gentle stop. Nice. Proceed to the next stop unguided and see how you get on.
good work. That concludes all of the basics of operating this train. In this training module, you will be taken through the operation of this Class 395 Javelin. During this brief introduction, we will be covering the critical driving controls and passenger operations. Look, when you're ready, climb aboard to get started. Take a seat in the driver's seat. This is where you'll be spending most of your time. Firstly, you will need to insert the master key to activate the desk. Set the headlights to let others around you know that this train is operational. For this introduction, you will be driving the train a short distance and performing passenger operations. Open the passenger doors to allow boarding. Now close the doors before departure. The reverser controls the direction of travel. But before attempting to apply power with the Class 395, you should check that power is available. In the top left corner of the main part of the cab desk, you can see the line volt and MCB VCB indicators. If line volt is lit, it means it is detecting active power. If it is not lit, you must either press the CTRL button to raise the pantograph if there are wires above you, or press the DC button to lower the third rail pickups if there is a third rail underneath you. If MCB VCB is lit, it means that a power cutout switch called a circuit breaker is open, which means power is not being made available to the train. Currently, we have line bolts, however, so we can move on. The train is now ready to depart. Now drive a loop of the circuit to get used to the controls. The train features a combined brake and throttle power handle, so pull the lever towards you to release the brakes and get moving. Coasting is a method used to efficiently maintain speed and reduce motor stress and maintenance requirements. Keeping to speed limits is important. If you begin over speeding, 
apply a small amount of braking force by moving the power handle into the braking range. The British Rail Class 395 Javelin is a high-speed dual-voltage electrical multiple unit, capable of running on both third rail and overhead electrification. 29 Javelins were built in Japan by Hitachi between 2007 and 2009 for Channel Tunnel Rail Link, or CTRL, domestic services. The Class 395 is capable of running at 140 miles per hour under AC overhead electrification and up to 100 miles per hour on DC third rail. You are approaching the station. Begin applying a small amount of braking force to bring the train to a gentle stop. Nice job. The train has safely come to a stop. You can now use the door control to open the passenger doors. Good work. That concludes all of the basics of operating this train. In this training module, you will be taken through the operation of this Class 465. During this brief introduction, we will be covering the critical driving controls and passenger operations. Look, when you're ready, climb aboard to get started.
Take a seat in the driver's seat. This is where you'll be spending most of your time. Firstly, you will need to insert the master key to activate the desk. The reverser controls the direction of travel. Set the headlights to let others around you know that this train is operational. For this introduction, you will be driving the train a short distance and performing passenger operations. Open the passenger doors to allow boarding. Now close the doors before departure. Now drive a loop of the circuit to get used to the controls. The train features a combined brake and throttle power handle, so pull the lever towards you to release the brakes and get moving. Coasting is a method used to efficiently maintain speed and reduce motor stress and maintenance requirement. Development of the Class 465 networker began in 1988, with the first unit being delivered in 1991 and the final in 1995. Of the 140 units produced, 131 remain in active service, 40 years after they were first introduced. The Class 465 Networker's eight traction motors produce a combined power output of 3,000 horsepower, that's 2,420 kilowatts, and allow the train to reach a top speed of 75 miles per hour. You are approaching the station. Begin applying a small amount of braking force to bring the train to a gentle stop. Nice job! The train has safely come to a stop. You can now use the door control to open the passenger doors. Proceed to the next stop unguided and see how you get on.
Good work. That concludes all of the basics of operating this train. In this training module, you will be taken through the operation of this Class 66 locomotive. During this brief introduction, you will be covering the critical driving controls and freight operations. When you're ready, climb aboard to get started. You need to insert the reverser first, and then you can move it forwards to set the direction of travel. Set the headlights to let others around us know this train is operational. The direct brake has three positions, apply, hold and release. They're directly affecting the brake cylinder pressure, shown on the left-hand side of the desk or on your HUD under the BC entry. While in the apply state, the brake cylinder or BC gauge will fill, meaning more and more brakes are being applied. Move the handle to the hold position to maintain the same level of braking and back to the release position to reduce or completely release the brakes. The direct brake is used to apply the brakes only on your locomotive and are faster to apply and release than the main brakes. If you're only running as a light locomotive, as you are now, it's usually quicker to just use these brakes. Now the brakes on this train require us to hold the brake handle in the release position. You can monitor the state of the brakes using the larger brake pipe control gauge in the centre. Now keep the brake control in release until you can see the brake pipe control needles are reading 5 bar pointing upwards. This will release the brakes fully. Now that the brake pipe control is at 5 bar, the brakes will fully release. Watch the brake cylinder or BC gauge to see it gradually reduce to zero, which tells you that the brakes are now fully released and you can move the train. As you apply power, notice the amp bar rising. This is the amount of power being fed into the traction motors. But try to keep this out of the red, as it means you're overpowering the motors and could damage them. Coasting is a method used to officially maintain speed and reduce motor stress and maintenance requirements. Built in London, Ontario, Canada by EMD, the British Rail Class 66 is a six-axle diesel-electric locomotive used primarily for freight operations in the UK. Introduced in 1998, the initial order of 250 locomotives was said to be the biggest single order of a locomotive since the era of steam trains. More than 500 Class 66 locomotives were built, with the final one being delivered in 2016. The Class 66 has earned the nickname Shed because of its shed-like pitched roof.
okay? Come to a stop using the direct brake now. The freight wagons are behind us, so change direction with the reverser, then change the junction indicated, either by walking over to it or using the map. The junction is correctly aligned, so you can now couple up to the freight. Approach slowly and stop just before the buffers. Don't forget to release the direct brake before you apply power. You can couple and uncouple from either an external camera or on foot. So let's connect the formation using the external camera. Return to the first pair. Nice work! Change direction with the reverser and move the train forward into the indicated siding.
Remember, you can couple and uncouple from either an external camera or on foot. So let's uncouple from the wagons on foot this time. That concludes this training module. In this training module, you'll be learning how to drive an LMS Jubilee class steam locomotive in BR Green livery. This class of locomotive was built between 1934 and 1936 and nicknamed Jubilee after one of its class was named Silver Jubilee. To get started, climb onto the footplate. Take a seat in the driver's position. This is where you'll be spending most of your time. In this training module, you will be performing passenger operations. You are now ready to depart the West Allerton. The reverser determines the direction of travel and how much power to apply. Move the reverser into the full forward position. This ensures that you will get the maximum power to get the train moving. As you pick up speed, you will need to move it towards the centre to save power. Slowly open the regulator to apply power. Remember that power delivery is delayed in a steam locomotive. This locomotive has two types of brakes, steam and vacuum. Steam brakes will apply and just the locomotive. Vacuum brakes will apply to the rest of the train, so long as it is equipped with vacuum brakes. To create a vacuum, you should use the ejectors. You started to pick up speed. 
Move the reverser towards the mid gear. This reduces the amount of steam let into the cylinder and saves energy. both types of brakes simultaneously. You can now continue the journey to Mossley Hill. <laughs> to create a vacuum, you should use...
Now close the doors and prepare to depart for Edge Hill unguided.
concludes this training module. In this training module, you'll be learning how to drive an LMS Stania Class 8F steam locomotive in BR Black livery. Today, you will be taking over this freight service bound for Ditton. This class of locomotive was built between 1935 and 1946 and was designed as a freight version of the highly successful Black 5 locomotive. Climb up onto the footplate to begin. Let's prepare the locomotive for departure. The reverser determines the direction of travel and how much power to apply. Move the reverser into the full forward position. This ensures that you will get the maximum power to get the train moving. As you pick up speed, you will need to move it towards the centre to save power. This locomotive has two types of brakes, steam and vacuum. Steam brakes will apply on just the locomotive. Vacuum brakes will apply to the rest of the train, so long as it is equipped with vacuum brakes. Use the combination brake to apply both types of brakes simultaneously. Vacuum brakes are released when there is a vacuum in the system. To apply braking force, air is added back in by the driver using the combination brake. To create a vacuum, you should use the ejectors. The small ejector should be left open when the train is running. The large ejector can be used to increase the vacuum more quickly after coupling or heavy braking. Open the cylinder box to remove any water from cylinders after it has been left standing. Water in the cylinders can damage the locomotive because it does not compress like steam. The regulator acts like a throttle for the steam locomotive. It controls how much steam is delivered to the cylinders. Slowly open the regulator to apply power. Remember that power delivery is delayed in a steam locomotive. Applying too much power too early can cause wheel slip. Now you move on, 
can open the regulator some more. Try not to exceed around 30 miles per hour while you're learning to control this locomotive. You're starting to pick up speed. Move the reverse towards the mid gear. This reduces the amount of steam back into the cylinder and saves energy. Includes this training module.